Welcome to the show with the Highlanders on a bye. It's time for a mid-competition review with former Black Captain Stu Wilson. But first, a quick look at results in round 11. that saw the Hurricanes drop vital flag points against the Stormers when the game was theirs for the taking. The Blues must be considered unlucky, beaten by a red side that never threatened the goal line. The Chiefs scrambled to win thanks to some Tim Nanai Williams intuition. No slowing, let alone stopping the Brumbies against the Force. The Bulls left it late to pull away from the Waratahs and the Cheetahs found the second half a lot easier than the first, beating the Kings comfortably enough. Not comfortable with the Crusaders, yet to show championship winning form. All right, Stuart, let's have a look at all five New Zealand franchises' performance so far midway through the competition, starting with the Blues. I thought dreadfully unlucky at the weekend. They're playing some exciting rugby, deserve a uh, better result. Yes, they did, and unfortunately now, Tom, the Aussie side, uh, the win loss tally is in their favour 7 3. So Every time we line up against those five sides in the Australian Conference, we're struggling to beat them. I thought that, you know, the Blues would have come off in Brisbane, gone into the showers, scratched their heads. You know, so many times you, you go into the showers and you haven't played that well, but you've won the game, and you think, heck, how the hell did we win that game? Yet, on in the weekend, the Blues would have come off, got into the showers, scratched their head and said, gee, we played all the rugby. We're the only team that scored a try, and yet we got stuffed, you know, 12-11. So they'd be hurting a bit, but in saying that, you know, they, they've got to feel pretty good about that unlucky loss. They're playing with um, great energy, you know, there's a lot of youth in that side. I think their structure is good. And, of course, they're playing, because they've got a quite a youthful side, their enthusiasm is way up there. And they would be, they'd feel a little bit bummed for that loss because they played all the footy. I think uh, John Kerman's winning over the fans. He seems to be giving the players licence to show that uh, immense natural talent they've got. Yeah, and I mean, they played a good style of rugby because the Reds, I think they only had five days rest and they had to, go, had to front again. So the Blues um, played their normal game with a bit of width. Um, they, they basically killed the break, breakdown. They, they were outstanding. They, and I thought that the Reds, half through that second half, were blowing really hard. And I thought, all you've got to do is keep going. But... A couple of errors, you know, errors by senior pros. Ali Williams twice made errors. Uh, Kevin Mialano, you know, two of the senior statesmen in the blue side, both lost the ball going over the, the goal line of the Reds in that last two or three minutes. And, you know, in actual fact, it was the senior pros um, that made the crucial areas, errors that, uh, that gave um, the Reds the, the penalty to win the game. What do you make of uh, Chris Noakes? He battled away down here at the Highlanders for a while, but he's a bit of a star up there. Ah, well, would he have to be the best buy in Super Rugby this year in New Zealand? You know, I've always thought that he was a capable first five. Probably like most of other people, Tom, we haven't seen enough of him, you know, particularly when he was down south. Um, but, you know, he's, he's, he's a double degree guy. He's got some clues, you know. You only, I've seen him on the telly a couple of times and he, he talks exceptionally well, you know. He's very, very bright. I like him because he takes the ball flat. He passes both left and right uh, equally strong. He's got a good kicking game, but more importantly, he can read the game. So when it's time to kick, he puts the odd kick through. And when it's, uh, I, I just think that he is the steadying ship. And of course, when you've got the little fella from Wainui Mata, Pity Weep, inside him, who, who I, oh, I think is, an, is playing exceptionally well, they've got a very strong and stable 9 and 10, and that has been the Achilles of the Blues since, since Carlos Spencer left, you know, 10 years ago. They haven't settled on a 9 and 10. Suddenly this year, John Kerman has got 9 and 10 playing every game and playing exceptionally well. And in contrast, the Chiefs struggling a little bit, but so too is Aaron Cruden, and that's a link there somewhere, I feel. Yeah, well, see, Aaron Cruden has played every game, every minute, hasn't been subbed off yet. Um, has not had the responsibility of the goal kicking because of, uh, they've got young Anskim. I think he does miss um, Sonny Bill Williams out there, but, you know, he is only as good as the Chiefs. And, you know, they, they were coming off a couple of losses. Um, and, you know, when you look at the score there with the Chiefs, you know, 37-29, they belted the, 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 um, the Sharks in the first 20 and then basically just turned the engine off and the Sharks got back in the game. And in the end, they had to scramble to win that game. I, he's still a very, very good little player. You remember the little grubber kick he put through um, mm -hmm. for one of the guys to chase and, and scored? He's doing everything well. Um, 
But he's only as good as his forward pack. And when they started to get go off the button against the Sharks, you know, he, he can only just do so much. So, yeah, you know, he's in a key position. The thing is that staggers me is that every time he looks out into the centre, he's got a new combination. I, what, I counted through the uh, the record book the other day how I think they were played, how many of the Chiefs played. They've played, um, I think, nine games. Well, out of nine games, they've had six different, or I think seven different combinations in the 12 and 13 jersey and yet they're still winning so you know they're having major problems in 12 and 13 trying to keep two guys together he's at number 10 or every game but every time he looks over his shoulder he's got another combination out there in the centers so when you look at say nine games and you've had six or seven different combinations in the centers this is where they're probably having a few problems but i do did think the combination they had out there, particularly Williams, Williamson at um, Wilson at, at, in, in the midfield, and Nanai Williams, I think you've got to stick with that. Even even if Buddy Kahui comes back, Nanai Williams was absolutely outstanding. You know, he fell off a couple of tackles, scored two tries, and chased that guy down from behind. Where surely, you know, the, you would have thought that's seven points, and he gave that guy five meters, and he still drilled him from behind. That's how good Tim Nanai Williams is. And I think with Willison at second five, they've got a pretty good inside centre combination, outside centre, and they should, they should stick together more often. If we look at the Hurricanes, they need their best 15 on the paddock as often as possible. Losing Savia, Julian Savia, was a, was a blow and could have been the difference between winning and losing at the weekend. Yeah, well, he just shows you when he doesn't play, um, you see, like, he's world class. He's only 21, 22. He's got a few domestic problems which he has to sort out. But if you take that away, and, and that's, a, that's a problem that he has to solve, and that's a very big problem, they've got to throw the book at him for that. His rugby, you know, going through the Super 15 start, the start of the season, he was the formed winger in the competition by, by a country mile. He was outstanding. However, in saying that, you know, the, the Hurricanes, uh, to, be, to be quite honest, um, Tom, uh, and, uh, and was it, um, who was the referee that night? Was it um, the ex-Kiwi guy? What's his name? Steve Walsh. Really, to be honest, uh, he could have put two canes in the bin with the, when they were killing the, uh, the rolling ball. You know, he got rid of Jeremy Thrush. The very next uh, lineup they had, and, and a drive and a rolling ball to the canes goal line. You know, Benny Franks went in there and deliberately and cynically killed that, dropped that that ball. Now he should have also got ten minutes in the bin. To be honest, mm-hmm. they should have been playing with seven forwards, and they could have lost that game. Well, they they lost that game, but in, in saying that, they, you know, they're their own worst enemies. Mm. And, and if they tied out their discipline, you know, they'll go, they're, they're very competitive, in fact, more than competitive, but they're, they're their own worst enemies right at this moment. Well, we talked about domestic problems. It looks like Zach Guilford has fixed his because he's found some yeah. form and uh, good to see him back on the scoreboard. Yeah, yeah it is. And, that, 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 you know, it's his first touchdown this year, so, you know, he'd be happy with that. But I'll tell you what, yeah, you know... Some of those supporters down there in the Crusaders country must be questioning, you know, you know, whether these red and black boys have, you know, have got the mental toughness to, to, to go right through to the end. You know, they, admittedly, they did come back, uh, well, at about 26, 24 down. But are we seeing the same Crusader side we've seen for many years? I don't know. There, there's just a few things there that are questionable. Whether they, you know, there are sides where they should be, they should be put in the way easily, uh, but they're not. The Blues' visit to the top three was brief, now displaced by the Chiefs, though the Auckland franchise stays in the playoff spots thanks to a bonus point. And just one point separates the Cheetahs from the chasing pack, now led by the Crusaders, who face a tough task against the Brumbies in Canberra next Sunday, where nothing but their best will do. The Hurricanes may look back on round 11 as the one that cost them a finals berth as they drop points to a fellow contender. And the Tars are in no man's land. One more slip up and they'll be cast adrift with the remaining four. The Chiefs grabbed the number one spot in the New Zealand Conference with the Blues and Crusaders within arm's reach. The Hurricanes now two wins away from the top and facing a stern test on the Velt next weekend. Three points split the Brumbies and Reds with the former having much the stronger challenger next week hosting the Crusaders while the Queenslanders head to Perth. The Waratahs struggle for points and the Republic continues. Same again in the next round. No lead up for the Bulls at the apex of the South African Conference as the three chasers now all have claims of usurping them with the right result. The Kings look useful enough to spoil for others a finals party they won't be invited to.